Peace. What up, y'all? Today I'm going to get into the secrets, the secret beef and the secret origin between uh, the Jews and the Gentiles, the white, the, the origin of the white race as, as taught by the Nation of Islam. This ain't racism or hate teaching, just like we learn in school about the, the dark ages or the Neanderthals or white people say that they cave people, they came from caves or the, the Vikings or the barbarians, Conan the barbarian. So whatever type of barbaric animal bestial history that white people teach about their own self, they don't call it hate teaching or whatever. So this ain't hate teaching either. This is history teaching according to the nation. So I'm going to read uh, some of what I'm talking about in the form of questions. And this is mainly for Nation of Islam students or people that ever studied the, the history and the teachings of the Nation of Islam in regard to the history and the origin of the races, in particular the Caucasian race and the Yakub, the black scientists who um, who produced a, the white race to a, a system of grafting, genetic engineering, grafting out, you know, splicing or diluting the germs. Um, so the questions is, is for students that's familiar with that, people that's familiar with that, five percenters, you know, nation of God and earth, or people that just familiar with NOI teaching. And the, the, the first question is, and regarding this, this beef, do you think there exists, or there exists today, any full-blooded, pure white family or group who are the descendants, direct descendants of those whites that avoided being captured and rounded up in Mecca, Arabia, 6,000 years ago, the ones that was r never run into the caves of Europe by the original man? <clears throat> that's the question number one. Two, do you think that there, I mean, this, this is the same question. Do you think there are any such pure blooded white descendants of those that never went into the caves who have kept their blood pure, who have never mixed their blood with any other nation or race in the last 6,000 years? If so, if you believe that's true, and if that is true, what would they look like? What would their genetic appearance be or their genetic features? You know, we hear the royal family and, and you know, blue bloods and the red heads, the green eye, you know, the, the, the red headed Caucasian. You know, those are the, the purest Caucasian. So are they, are they supposedly from the caves or are they supposedly from that bloodline that never went into the caves? What type of mentality would they now have, those that never went into the caves, after developing Yakub's full tricknology, science of tricks and lies, that teaching for the last 6,000 years straight? What would their mentality be like after that versus the mentality of those only having some of Yakub's forgotten tricknology for the last 4,000 years instead of 6,000? And that's those that Moses had to reteach. To the Caucasians, not to the to the whites. These now are called Caucasians because they went savage from living in the caves of the Caucasus, Caucasus Mountains for two thousand years. Prior to that, whites was not called Caucasians, Caucasus Asians, or West Asia. So, based on that backdrop of the nation's, you know, version of history. Um, would or did Big Brother White Man use his superior wisdom and knowledge of evil, meaning the science of tricks and lies, tricknology, did, did Big Brother that never went into the cave, did that group of whites use their superior wisdom and knowledge of evil, tricknology, to manipulate, master, and use their little brother? The Caucasians, the ones that did go into the caves, and Moses delivered them and was their Messiah and taught them how to civilize themselves, or civilize them and taught them some of the technology. Did Big Brother that never went through that use their superior knowledge of technology and their their purpose for even being created or made by Yaku 
they, they use that to their advantage, even over um, the little brothers who call themselves Jews now, who followed um, their savior or their, their Messiah, which was Moses. He's the one that taught them, you know, he raised them out of that savage condition and taught them civilization and science and how to live a respectful life. So did Big Brother use their knowledge of good and evil, that superior knowledge, to use Little Brother as a tool and slave also, same way that they, they did with the black people and other people, other races, races? Did they use their knowledge to issue false promises of equality to their own little brother and, and use them and help them, you know, use them as the muscle? They was the brains the whole time, but they, they feed this promise to the Gentile whites that we equal. We're going to all rule equally as white, superior, white, white power. But the whole time they was just they was just working the little the little dumb white masses also they 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 had more advantage and benefits than, than blacks or any other race but they sold them that dream and that promise based on race like you know we, we family we together until you know hitler and you know others realized that big brother was playing them too and disposing of them you know using them as disposable diapers also and sacrificing them and not even helping them for 2,000 years while they was living in savage conditions in the cave, they didn't come after them. They didn't come after their own little brothers. You know, the original man, the righteous, had to send Moses, who was, who was half original. His mother was white. According to the teachings, the Nation of Islam teachings, um, Moses or Musa was a half original meaning his mother was white and his father was original black man. So if he was the one sent, first ever sent to the Caucasians that was in the, in the, in the caves living savage for the last 2,000 years, how was his mother white? His mother would have had to been one of them in the caves. So obviously she was from that group of whites that never went into the caves. So not only did he have a, uh, sensitivity and, a, and a, a sympathy for for whites because his mama was one of them. She also must have had the knowledge of some of Yakub's trichnology also that she taught him. And we won't, we're not going to get into uh, his father-in-law Jethro and what Jethro taught him and who he was. But side note, uh, according to the Quran, um, in the chapter called the Cave, it's it said is it's, it's there was two parties, you know, that um, was kind of quizzed to see which one of the two parties could calculate the amount of time that they had stayed in the cave. Those two parties, you know, it could, it could, that could represent the party of, of whites that never went in the cave, or that could represent two parties uh, within those that went into the caves. Because once Moses came, he actually split up. He, he created two two camps or two parties when he brought his teaching and, and that's a party of, of whites that was in the cave that accepted his teaching to try to be righteous and then there's another party called the gentile whites that that didn't accept moses's teaching and just rejected that and just kept living according to their own nature so it's really technically three parties it's a, it's a party of whites that never went in the cave and then among that party that's in the cave once Moses came, then he, he caused a, a two-party situation within them, the party that was going to accept his teaching or in a, in a party of them that didn't accept his teaching. So just had to put that out there, too. So their own big brother didn't come after him, but Moses did. So that as a backdrop, you know, what's y'all thoughts of that science?